So I'll uh, call the meeting to order. It's uh, 5.59 on July 11, 2023 is the committee of a whole meeting. Uh, I guess uh, just the meeting will be called to order and the agenda, f the agenda for the meeting adopted as circulated. Uh, we have up uh, first. Can you speak up, please? Okay, thank you. Sure. Can't hear you. Sorry. Can you so, turn your mic off? Yeah, we don't have speakers. The, the mic is The on. mic doesn't work for it's that. It for only the works video, for recording it's, uh, the meeting. Sometimes we're competing with the ventilation system, so. So the first one up is it's, is uh, Sergeant Kenneth McEachern and uh, Sheldon Hollingworth. Yeah. Sheldon couldn't make it. Yep. Okay. So he's going to do the RCMP report, so if you could just start. Yeah, so <clears throat> I sent you guys out the uh, quarterly stats there, um, 2022-2023 in this time period. Uh, you can see our numbers stay similar across the board, a little fluctuation, but uh, if it stays constant, we're typically happy that we're not seeing any spikes. Um, that being said, I just finished talking to a number of people here that I guess a number of things uh, haven't been reported within uh, certain developments. So we encourage people, if things are happening in your developments, to uh, to make a phone call and, and call us and let us know, uh, even if it's minor, because if we don't know if things are happening, we don't know if things are happening. Like such as? Uh, like if there's any sort of thefts or break-ins or theft of uh, anything from your vehicle. Um, you see a lot of people coming through the, the developments and they're trying handles on doors and taking things from vehicles. So once again, we encourage people to lock your vehicles don't leave your garage door open or in your vehicle. Um, we've had a number of uh, license plates taken off of vehicles, and then Winnipeg Police will recover them on a different vehicle in the city. So we'll take your plate and put it on another stolen vehicle around the city. Um, some of the other things we've been seeing is, uh, so we had three vehicles stolen where keys were left in the vehicles. So don't leave keys in your vehicles. Uh, even if it's in the garage, don't leave the key in the vehicle. Because they'll break in your garage and they'll find the keys and steal the vehicle. Is there any specific area that happened with three together and one street or spread apart? It's spread out towards the community. Okay, okay um, just so we're clear, um, uh, Mayor, when, um, Mr. when the sergeant's um, presenting, we cannot ask questions, we cannot make comments. You're welcome to do that after he has finished his presentation and has left. But during the meeting, it's only for counselors. Okay, sorry. Um, so yeah, so we've uh, seen that. Um, we had one vehicle where they tried to steal it, they tried to drill up the ignition. Uh, but typically, it's, it's keys left in vehicles, keys left in ATVs. That's what we're seeing that are being taken. Um, the license plates, um, uh, we had a laptop taken out of a vehicle. Once again, don't leave things in your vehicle. People look in, they see a backpack, whatever. It's enticing them to go in to your vehicle. Um, <clears throat> we've had a number of uh, trailers taken. Um, with all this construction going on, people are coming, they're stealing trailers with tools in them. Or they're breaking in the construction area in the trailers because they know there's tools in them. Uh, they're going into some of these houses being built because they know people leave tools in the houses. Uh, so we've been talking with the trades, telling them, I know it's a pain in the ass for the trades, so a lot of them they'll park a forklift in front of their trailers now, or, or make it so much harder for people to break into it. Um, for uh, like the break and enters, we had one uh, somebody tried breaking in a garage. The homeowner woke up, scared them off. Um, but that's once again, you know, make sure it's locked because a lot of these garage complaints we get. Garages are unlocked, so people are just coming, they're trying door handles, and they're just going in. Um, another one, uh, some of the businesses got hit. They just went through the seat can. They stole some gas. They went to another business. Uh, they cut the fence, and they just went through a couple vehicles in the parking lot and then left. Nothing was taken. Um, a residence, snowmobile and trailer taken, and some tools. So the snowmobile and trailer, they weren't locked up. Like, put a trailer, put a hitch lock on your on your trailers and stuff just to deter them you know it make it hard for people to steal stuff um, yeah another guy guy went into an unlocked shed three weed trimmers taken once again not locked up uh, the day where we can just leave our doors open 
is gone. We need to lock everything up. Um, and we find with construction, people tend to come through a lot more. When construction dies down, we tend to see the break-ins and thefts die down as well because people tend to secure their stuff more. So they'll come through and they'll be looking to steal anything they can. Tools and uh, uh, garden stuff, all that stuff, those are key things that they can steal. They pawn off and sell very easily for money for drugs or whatever. So our advice is just lock things up, keep your vehicles clean, don't leave anything in them. And uh, that's about all I've got. Uh, um, Sergeant Kitty, <coughs> I tried to call your office and there's no one picking up after four o'clock. So if there's an, what is the non-emergency number that we can call, um, residents could call after four o'clock? It is 204-668-8322. Uh, 8322. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And before that, they should call the 667-6519 number? That's correct. That's for our office. They can call the other number anytime, 24 anytime? hours a day. Okay. That's the, the non-urgent reporting. And if it's urgent, if somebody's breaking your house, you call 911, right? Quick and easy. And then also the non-urgent stuff, like you can go online and report instances online as well too. Like if you just had something stolen and you just want to do a quick report, you can go online, do the report, send it in then at least we get notified. Somebody will give you a quick call, touch base with you, hey, and you're just like, I just wanted to report it just so it's on record. Okay, perfect, we just have a record done. So, so that way you don't have to be on the phone talking to us for a long time if you don't want to. You just do a quick online thing. So the more that people call, the more that you know there's activity in that neighborhood, right? It does, and then it creates more stats. And with the stats, it gets us more police officers too. So we wanna, I'm not saying we wanna push the stats up and show we got a lot of crime here, but you know, if there is crime, we need the resources to fight that crime. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Anyone else have any questions for the RCMP officer, the Council of I'm just wondering, do you have any communities in your, I guess, jurisdiction that has cameras, like municipal cameras in the areas, and would that, does that help prevent anything, or does it get you more information if there's consistently stuff happening? We don't have any in our areas. Like I know Winnipeg, <clears throat> they just put in another, I think 25 cameras into Winnipeg. And it helps out when they're trying to track criminals and stuff and like somebody steals a vehicle, which way they go and they check the camera system. Um, it's tougher in rural areas, right? Because A, we don't have the lighting. In the city, you know, you got better lighting. It's slower speeds. It's easier to capture vehicles and license plates. Out here where you're traveling fast, it's harder to capture them. But that being said, put cameras up it's a deterrent if you put cameras on your house somebody's walking down the street and they're gonna break in they're like okay this guy's got cameras even if they're poor quality whatever they're like you know what? I'll go to the next house because this guy has cameras so anything you can put in is a deterrent whether it helps in the big picture I don't know but I know when it comes to residences the ones getting broken into tend not to have cameras okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I think one of the questions that um, Councilor Bersetti was kind of alluding to is there are some there's some of our communities where there's one way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. If we, if the municipality put a camera on the one way in or one way out, then we would capture who's driving in and who's driving out. That's correct. That way if a vehicle is described, you could probably get the license plates. So many of our residents like Rivercrest, um, I know is one way in, one way out. Um, same with uh, River Springs, and River's Edge is the same way. Mm -hmm. So um, do you think putting up a camera at the entrance and exit would help? I think it would to a certain point. Yeah. <clears throat> um, a lot of these people doing break-ins are using stolen vehicles. Yeah. Which, so if you run the plate, it's a stolen vehicle and you can't find them, right? Um, but that being said, you know, if we capture the plate, stolen vehicle, and then all of a sudden Winnipeg police capture this guy, we can link him back here and lay the charge if they, they catch him in that vehicle as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Winnipeg's arrested a lot of our guys with, uh, like, our plates off our vehicles here. Our stolen vehicles end up in the city, and they've captured them and, and charged them. So if we can put them in the areas, it'll definitely help. Okay. 
Good. And can I ask also one question? What what should a resident do if they think they're being broken into and they're at home? Call 911 right away. Okay. And should they go into a room and lock themselves in somewhere or make noise or? Well, they, sh they should lock themselves in the room. And you know what, as much as you'd like to confront them, don't because they might have a weapon. And you don't want to lose your life over some property. Yeah. Lock yourself in there, make noise. I'm on the phone, I'm calling the cops, get out of my house and just yell. And then I'm on the phone with the cops and just so they know you're there and they know you're calling the police and they're going to get the hell out of there. Okay. Okay. But I, I do have a question that I know some residents have asked. You know, lots of times if uh, I'm coming home you know, late at night, I'll see uh, um, an RCMP vehicle parked radar in. And residents will say, you know, why don't they drive through the area instead of doing traffic enforcement? Obviously, traffic enforcement is, uh, you know, valuable also. But I also think that some of these residents would like to see, you know, and, and I'm up late. I do see you guys do rounds in my area now and then. But I know I do get that comment. There's always uh, people sitting, you know, RCP sitting on pipeline radaring or in between the, the perimeter in the middle of the night instead of, you know, patrolling. So we do both. We do patrols. <clears throat> we do the static radar. Um, the radar thing works well because a lot of these criminals, they're ripping around, breaking in places. So we've caught a number of them speeding, so we pull them over, and they've got all the break-in tools, and we're able to apprehend them there. Um, so, you know, it works both ways. Um, we do as many patrols as we can. Um, we are getting, uh, we've arrested quite a few people doing break-ins recently. Um, so we're getting them off the street. But it, it tends to be a rotating door. We're seeing the same people doing the break-ins over and over again. We arrest them, we put them in the court, the court puts them on probation, sends them out the door, they're back doing it again because they need to break in and steal stuff to pay for their drugs and their habits, right? Mm -hmm. We're getting frustrated at our end. Um, but it's good because now the court system, they announced on the news that they're going to come up with the, the ankle um, bracelets to track these people on probation, mm -hmm. which I'm hoping this will help as well. I have one more question, Mayor. Um, my understanding is if somebody's breaking into a garage, they're usually breaking into the man door on the side. Is that normally where you see the break? <coughs> That's typically the way they get in, yeah. Okay. If you don't have one, then you're lower risk of being broken into, for okay. sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate the information Thanks. that you shared with us. And if the residents um, from Taylor Co. want to chat with the sergeant, you yes. can do so now inside. <laughs> So we'll continue on. Did he, sorry, just did, go ahead. did he know he was getting ambushed tonight, Councillor Clyburn? <laughs> I tried to call him, but he knew right before he, we walked in that he, he was going to be talking to them. He was okay with that. Okay. okay. I think uh, we'll uh, ask you just to refrain from making comments from the audience. So we're down now to point uh, four point four one exchange group Canada Community Fund oh, uh, expenditure. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, just before that, happens, okay. just I know on the agenda infrastructure utilities okay. committee. Can Wait. I just uh, bring some items up? Sure, by all means, by all means, go ahead. Okay, um, just with regards to um, this, I'm just bringing some points up, Mr. Mayor, for administration to look into uh, and to come back uh, at a future committee, the whole meeting. Uh, or come back, uh, yeah, I think a community of the whole meeting, either that or at the uh, regular meeting of council. So number one is um, um, an idea came up with regards to um, doing some repairs on the provincial roads and perhaps billing back to the province of Manitoba. Uh, I can tell you on highway number nine, there are patches uh, of, uh, of highway number nine north of West St. Paul School that are in deplorable condition. Um, so changing lanes is problematic. Um, you know, it just it's problematic. There's just so much uh, separation of the of the road that's occurring. 
that that's a problem. So if there's a way that perhaps uh, the RM can attend to that, uh, you know, if the province is not responding, then maybe we can build the province back. As well, also on Northumberland and Jackman, the access points, access and egress on the uh, on the east side there onto Highway Number Nine of those two roads, um, the RM can't really do anything because it's provincial roads, and the access for both those and both those streets is also quite deplorable. Um, you know, it's just. It, if there's a way for the RM to deal with that by perhaps fixing it or tacking it onto a tender, getting the unit pricing, at least we have an actual cost um, on those roads and then building that back to the province of Manitoba. At the end of the day, I think the province definitely wants to serve the community and perhaps the RM is better equipped to respond quicker. Um, so, you know, there was, a, there was a strategy that was brought up, uh, I learned recently from another RM, uh, where you can build something like that back to the province, I think we should explore that and see what kind of what kind of uh, solutions might exist for 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 both Highway Number Nine and for Jackman and for Northumberland. Also, with regards to Highway Number Nine, just uh, just north of Lister Rapids, Mr. Mayor, uh, there's a turn by the old St. Benedict's uh, that kind of veer, the the road kind of veers left, and there are currently some signs there. That are erected on posts that tell the people that tell drivers that you're you're going to veer left a little bit, and these signs are visible at night. They're reflective signs, but unfortunately, uh, half those signs have been knocked down or they're they're missing. I know the RM has made efforts to reach out to the province of Manitoba uh, to inform them of this, and I think it's on their to-do list. But again, um, you know, nothing nothing has happened in the last couple three months. So I'm just kind of concerned. It's a safety issue. I've seen cars in the ditch. I've actually seen a car go into the ditch and hit property. Um, so it's, it's, and this problem has still not been resolved. So I'm kind of concerned for drivers and for, for residents who, who are near that, uh, near that, uh, that section of the highway number nine. And finally, Mr. Mayor, just last point on Northumberland in the news. Um, there was an article in the Selkirk Journal about a new, um, orchard that's opening up or that has opened up on Northumberland I think that's a great congratulations to that business owner they're doing some kind of a you pick uh, recently was called by the by that owner on Northumberland uh, went down there it is a, a, a mud road uh, it's impassable there's signage that says that it's impassable in in wet conditions um, but uh, the request coming from the resident uh, or pardon me not the resident but the uh, the business owner on that street was can we look at perhaps putting two inch down um, on that mud road from the section that's paved or that's gravel to uh, to that business maybe it could be a, an LID but I'm just looking to see if we can get a cost from um, from public works from infrastructure in terms of that and perhaps bring it back for future consideration thank you Mr. Mayor okay. Question for uh, Councillor Pactican. We're talking about Northumberland on the McPhillips side. To yes, the, correct. Okay, right. West of McPhillips, yeah. yeah. Um, also, echo what um, Councillor Pactican is talking about. River Springs has the same problem with um, exit, ac exit and entrance, and so does Allenford in the Rivercrest area. And I asked for these things as well uh, originally when we did our budget, and again, it was Manitoba infrastructure issue and it's it hasn't gone anywhere either so if if we're going to look at those things then let's look at all of them and uh if we have to do them and then back charge to uh mount infrastructure so be it thank you okay so then we'll do, move down to uh four point uh four one uh, four sorry four point four point one Exchange Group, Canada Community Building Fund Annual Expenditure Report. Just, uh, is there any questions you have on it? It's basically uh, the audit from the uh, gas tax that uh, was done. No questions? Um, just a quick sure. question, Mr. Mayor. So the, uns the cumulative uh, unspent is about two, mi two point one million. Uh, what what can these funds be earmarked for? Just curious. I'll uh, pass that over to our acting 
few. She can probably be more qualified to answer than I can. I remember reading it. I know it's infrastructure. Right. So this is uh, what was formerly called our gas tax um, revenue. And so uh, there's a number of projects that can be um, have these funds applied to um, uh, roads improvements um, are, are what we m mainly use these funds for uh, but other projects may possibly depending if there's other funding or um, what the nature so there's some criteria um, that qualify a project as um, co as being able to use these funds um, and so it's, that's a hard question but uh, we can certainly give um, Council some information about what sorts of things are available for this money. And just as a follow-up, has Council um, had any input in terms of um, a plan to spend those funds at this point? Yes, that's in, done in your in your uh, budget uh, process. Okay. Um, so a, a good deal of uh, your road uh, improvements this year is coming from that reserve. Okay, thank you. Now we go down to 4.5.1, which is the uh, bylaw. Yeah. 4.5? We were in 4. Uh, 4.4.2. 4.4.2. Oh, right, 442. Yes. Going down, I'm going down too fast, sorry. 4.4.2, five year capital expenditure. I guess uh, I'm just bringing this forward again just to make sure that uh, we have some input into the five-year plan. I'm not sure if you guys have any ideas, if there's anything, you, any questions, anything you want to have a discussion on, uh, try to understand why some of these things are on the plan or if there's anything you want to add to the plan. Uh, I don't know if you guys have some. I just had a question regarding the uh, West Bank Phillips extension. What's, uh, what's a quick explanation of that one? Um, yeah, that's something that our previous CAO put in to extend I, water. Is that water? Okay. Yeah, and I believe that the explanation I was given, it was for the industrial park. Uh, Mayor, I have the question of the PW office expansion. Never saw that till this year. Don't know who put it on there. Not in favor of it. We need to tour the public works building first of all I've been in there once um, I haven't seen the building I don't know what's in the building I don't know what offices are being used or not used so I'm not going to approve a million dollar expansion when I haven't seen anything so we need to to do a tour first okay no, that's fair enough before we we start allocating a million dollars for an expansion um, I, I think council did discuss the water main renewal at Rivercrest. That was a discussion. Yeah. And the River's Edge lift station, I probably would venture to guess that our, our inf um, director of infrastructure probably put that on there, but we should have a discussion with him as to what needs to be upgraded. I believe that's an upgrade. And what's that on? That's the lift station for River's Edge. Oh, it yes. Was out yep. of, it's out of compliance and we have to bring it up to compliance or you know we should have a discussion with our director of infrastructure about that and where this figure came from and the administration building was bumped up it was never uh, at 2024 or 2025 we need to really have a discussion as to what we want to do with the administration building uh, I think we're we've been putting away funds for it so far but we really need to discuss if we want to revitalize this building, add to it, renovate it, or we want another building, and where would we have that building, and how much are we willing to spend? I believe the original estimate was over $4 million. Okay. Uh, in my last term, there was a discussion about that. So uh, before we start putting more money towards this, we should probably have a discussion as a council as to what the needs are and what we want to see and whether or not we want to revitalize. So is there any information that you, uh, that you want to look at first before we have that discussion or is, that, is there information? Well, I, I believe there were some plans at one point. Yes, uh, so we've had a consultant come to um, 
do a, an analysis of, of what could be done to this building for expansion. Um, and it was, it was deemed not reasonable to expand at this location for the costs um, that it would require and, and for what gains that could be achieved. So um, that, that was done, I b believe, in the last term? Well, I don't think we decided. I think it was an option that was given. The, there were two options presented. One option was to renovate in here. Okay. bump it out, bump it forward possibly, and what would we gain from that? And part of the discussion was this is a historical building, so would we run into problems because it's historical, right? And so any time that, I know in construction, any time you're renovating an old building, you're going to run into problems, right? So that was the discussion that we had, but no decision was made. Uh, there was no council resolution, and then uh, a, a new uh, building project was presented to us we we still didn't make any decision on it and we were given a budget of what that would cost and since that time the only thing I've seen is um, budgeting every year money to go towards the administration building but we don't have any land for it we don't have a location for it and there hasn't been a council resolution as to what we're actually doing yet so uh, the question that I had asked is what would happen to this building if we build a whole new administration building? And now that I see the PW office expansion, you know, my question is if we need office space and we're doing an office expansion here and we're doing an administration building expansion, wouldn't it make sense to do one expansion and have the PW office also be part of that? So there's a whole lot of variables that we need to discuss as a council. In my opinion, Con uh, con just, just read Councilor Pack down. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, there's these are these are definitely uh, points that we need to have a meeting about, and perhaps uh, uh, we've had meetings before where we have scheduled um, sort of rapid fire presentations, and maybe we could do that here too with the administration building, uh, the public works office expansion, and the uh, well for me for sure the West McPhillips extension. I'd like to know a little bit more about. That one, I think there is some merit in doing uh, the admin building. Uh, it makes sense. There's, an, you know, there's, uh, we have uh, staff that are working in uh, less than ideal conditions. Um, council chambers is, is is not, I don't think, big enough to accommodate the growth that's happening within the RM when we have uh, public delegations. So there's probably a, a case for doing the administration building. I'm, I'm not sure about the office expansion. I agree with Councillor Kleiber. Uh, let's uh, let's have a look and let's uh, get some more information on. Uh, those three items for sure. Councilor Campbell? Yeah, I, I do believe we did uh, discuss um, the admin building, the, the money earmarked for this year. I think we discussed that in uh, budgetary meetings this year originally. We, we, we discussed a, a <coughs> amount to go into the fund. Yeah, and I think that's all that is. Yeah. yeah. But this is now a plan to build the building as well. In 2025, I see that. Yeah. So yeah. I, I it was originally like way far back. It was like a five-year plan, uh, I think, in our last term. So I, I'm not sure where we're going with this. I'm not sure what plan we're going with. So I, I would just like more information. Where's, where are we looking for land? Yeah. Well, we, we, had the, we had discussed that. We had kind of talked about that as well. Before. Yeah, very briefly, yeah, though, right? But I, I, yeah. you know, I, I agree with that. It's 2025 is uh, what that, that big, you know, 2.3 is your mark for. So. Uh, there's time for discussions on that for sure. Yep. Councilor Bajani? Uh, I'm going to agree with Councilor Kleiber. It was a five year plan three years ago, which this is adding another two years. So that, you know, it has been moving. We did go into discussion previous council, you know, looking at expanding this building or putting up another one. And what we decided is start putting stuff in a reserve. Right. And then starting to look for land that, you know, whatever would come up. Because we looked at the feasibility of doing this building. We can't bump ahead. You can't bump to the sides. This is a historic building, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. And the basement to this building is, well, less than adequate to store stuff in. Let's just put it that way. Um, so, so going into to making this building accessible, and all that, it, you would never make the, the the historic part accessible, adding elevators, adding anything like that, if we're going on to the second floor. So, I, yeah, there was a discussion about an elevator, I recall. 
a while ago. So, yeah, yeah I agree with you, Councillor Bassetti, but we hadn't made any decisions on it. We didn't make any decisions. We just no. admitted that we're just saying that we're putting stuff in a reserve. Yeah. So when the time comes, we're not sitting here going, okay, it's a $4 million project and we're putting the money together for four, you know, up to $4 million, where we're already starting to put a reserve fund so it's, you know, not a toll on everything. No, I agree with you. 100%. Uh, is there anything that you guys like to see added? Because I know I heard some comments about a cricket court or uh, I know we talked about Tennis Manitoba, a rec center that was brought up. Is that something that we should be looking at adding to this five-year plan or? Well, I think we have to, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I go ahead. think we should talk to or have some representative from that phase two committee that, you know, did a mm -hmm. hundred and something page study on it and had consultants coming in and look at what, what the community asked for then. You know, okay. it might have changed now. There might be surveys going out. There might be, you know, another smaller version of that study done to see what is the ask from the community. Because right now we're saying bring, where if you go through the city, it's it's people are looking for indoor soccer. They're looking for rink um, pools. They're looking for splash pads. So I think it's maybe the times might have changed a bit where the community might be looking for something else. You know, there's been a lot of growth and a lot of change in the community, so. Okay. Mayor, if I may. Councilor Clever. I think to, um, we should investigate, like we have a big community that that uh, their their culture is cricket. And so this, this has already come up for us and we should investigate what that cost would be, what cost would be associated with that. Uh, we, we've been talking about an arena um, and if it goes on to this plan, um, then it's something that we're starting already to commit to, in my opinion. So we have to talk about costs. We have to talk about whether or not this is something that we're, we're going to entertain, how feasible is it, et cetera, et cetera. And um, uh, the splash pad, uh, I know Councillor Campbell is very excited about a splash pad. and. Um, Cer certainly has community um, support. And I, I think that we should ask our neighbors, East St. Paul, who just put one in, what kind of costs we're looking at. And perhaps, you know, we could get uh, a developer to contribute to something like that too in a phase. So maybe instead of 10% green space, they could contribute to something like that. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's something that we, toss around those kinds of ideas you know so that's my opinion okay anyone else any more go ahead councilor so yeah, just question. yeah thank you mr mayor just so from a process perspective uh, maybe i could direct a question to the acting cao um or yourself mr mayor Inter if uh this council wants to have further input and have some information um, at an educational briefing regarding some of these items and or consider adding other things to this plan what's the process can can we table it until until a further time or do we have to deal with this now no 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 you know what like basically this is just sort of like an idea gathering session brainstorming session like what are you guys looking for you guys all came up with good um, good input you're asking for some information like what's the rationale on the administration building the um, um, PW office, like what, why are those? They may be solid, good reasons for it, but probably if we can bring those that that study forward and, and review it, then we can uh, talk about it some more. Uh, same with, you know, we talked about an arena, Tennis Manitoba is building something. Uh, I know that uh, they have some plans for uh, the um, community center, and maybe it's something that we can do a joint venture I know, um, I forget what we, you mentioned that we wait till a period of time with Tennis Manitoba. I forget what it was, about the arena and their facility that they want to do. Uh, well, we have a memorandum of understanding with Tennis Manitoba and right. we're working on a formal agreement right, uh, okay. with, with them. But yes. certainly the development of the, the full site will be phased. So there's there's time and opportunity to have input on future phases of that. Yeah, 
Okay, so then we'll, okay. And, but they haven't come forward for this, uh, the, this agreement yet? No, no, I'm working on that. Oh, you are? Okay. Just okay. Councilor Roshetti. One more comment. Um, Councilor Kleiber asked for maybe a, you know, it's new council um, with a lot of changes that happened, the like public works, all that. Maybe we should set up a tour for all of council to do public works, the fire hall, some access center, yeah. all the municipal buildings, just so that, you know, everybody gets to see the changes that might have happened over the last while or just have never been in there. Yeah. So when would be a good time to do a tour? In the fall. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I agree for that. Any particular time in the fall? Any time in the fall? Or? We're a little far off to that, I think. Well, we should be throwing we out We could do ideas. it after a count, uh, committee of the whole meeting. Well, maybe not, right? Because well, it's 6 no, o'clock. You'd yeah, you, you'll have to consider that Public Works ends their day at 3.30. Yeah. So whatever you book after that would require overtime costs, just so that you're you're aware of that. Um, access centers open... Um, extended hours be, because of the nature of, of their activities there. Um, so that might be something to, to consider, maybe an earlier start, um, start at Public Works and and make your way around. But well, and the other thing is maybe our CAO would have keys that we could, could we access it with the CAO, the Public Works building? Uh, certainly, but I, I think it would be helpful to have a Public Works staff member. If you had questions, I'm, I might not be able to answer any questions about operations or day-to-day -day, um, functioning of, of that building. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to see a, a manager there, a a manager. access center. I'd like to see Demera there, our rec director. You know, we're not only doing the tour, we're actually, we're, we're trying to sit there and listen what's working, what's not, and no. what we can do to make it work. So to have a manager or a representative of, at a higher level there would work. Yeah. So just uh, this item is going to the planning meeting on Thursday and then to the regular council at the, uh, you know, later on July. What's, uh, what's, what's our direction on this? I guess. Well, I guess we'll uh, set up a tour. I, I, I put this on the planning meeting on Thursday in case there needed some more discussions on it, but I, I don't think. So we're just going to receive his information, essentially? Yes. Okay. That's, that's what it is. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll set up a We'll set up a tour somewhere, sort of put a date way out there in front so that everybody can be prepared for it. Okay. Bring, bring forward some of these ideas, or these uh, documents that we have for the rationale of some of the capital projects so that we can take a look at it and learn why they were put on and to see um, if, if we're all in agreement with it still. And then just uh, continue moving it forward. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Um, Okay, our number four next on the line is 4.43, our labor costs for utilities. Uh, generally, I had a, uh, I'll bring it up here, where are we? Are they so generally, I had a, a, when I was looking at the financial reports, uh, I, I saw some, some questions I needed answered about uh, utility charge costs, costs and labor applied, applied to utility costs. Uh, so I asked the question is how is it done and uh, our, uh, act, our director of finance indicated that all utility staff rec records how many hours are spent on each task performed each day. Based on the task performed, the hours are recorded to the utility that they are compared to. So that means whenever they work on a utility, those costs get applied to that utility and it's only those costs alone. If there's, uh, and I guess that also applies for road construction. If there's road work being done, those costs that they did spent on road work, it's done to road work. So that's basically the reason I was asking the question. And this is how she, and this was her response to it. So, any questions on this? Or no? no? Okay. So just as a, a follow-up question, Mr. Mayor. So what? What? Uh, the way I read this then is if we we could actually ask the. Director of Finance to provide a labor cost to each project? I would say yes. According to that, I don't know uh, what's all involved in that. I, we would probably have to ask uh, okay. our Director of Finance on that, but yes. Okay. 
Councillor Clyburn? Yeah, so I believe that um, our finance uh, person does pretty well the same thing that I do is when I tracking costs for a job, it's allocated. And so there's an allocation button and you allocate the cost to that particular job. So she probably has, I, I know I've talked to her about this in the past, she has allocations for different projects. So she should be able to give you the allocation costs of so, any projects. So is that for a specific project, let's say, you know. Um, PW uh, extension. Well, that's, that's a capital expense, which is true. Yeah, but there would be a job costing for that as well. Because any bills that you get in for that, you would have, you would job cost it to that job. So if, if there's a particular, I know that with labor, she does the same thing. Some of it is uh, allocated. So for example, some can be allocated to general administration. Let's say the managers can be general administration. It can be supervision of landscaping. It can be, go be going different places from one salary. So she does, she does allocate everything. So yeah, she, I, so I was just trying to further clarify what Councillor Pat Cam was asking. So if there's work done on Jackman Road, she can do it. Like we can get a cost analysis of oh, specifically Jackman Road. I don't think so. To, no, I don't think she be. allocates that way. But uh, mm -hmm. you can certainly ask her. I mean, if that's something Council wants to do, that's extra work for her. But, um, you know, she would probably oh, allocate that to that's road right. repair rather than specifically Jackman Road repair. It would go to road repairs or it would go to roads. Okay. Right? Councilor so, I, I believe also the manager of public works, like on where you're getting onto the roads and that kind of stuff, th there's many times previously that I've gone in there and asked about stuff and has he'll bring you up a binder that'll have you a cost, fuel, hours, everything that have been spent on that, on that particular project and getting back onto the utilities like it says here everything is allocated if we were working on an LID on the, I'm just going to use River's Edge pump station which is an LID that would be put right back into the LID for River's Edge through that utility so I think that's what we're you know what yeah, you're no, asking no. It yes, is. Yes, no. and, and I know the manager of public works is very he's a stickler with the numbers on that okay there was something that came up years back and I went back in and asked and pulled a binder out and it's it's pretty well with PO numbers and everything in there, so. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Nothing? Okay. 4.4.4, uh, purchase of Kubota Moors. So these are the quotes that were presented to us. We didn't uh, have it at the time of they weren't presented at the time when we uh, um, made our decision, but you can see what the cost was for uh, Kubota tractors and for the John Deere station. Can I ask uh, Councillor Campbell a question? For sure. Because he's an expert on some of this stuff. Uh, Councillor Campbell, is there any difference in quality between Kubota and John Deere, in your opinion? Uh, not in my opinion. Kubota uh, you know, would be a tier one piece of equipment, so would John Deere. Um, you know, as Councillor Practican was talking about here earlier, it's not, you know, the Coyote name would, would be like, a, even though Coyote's a decent, it wouldn't be the same quality as Kubota or John Deere, or even, okay. uh, you know, I, I would even say Cub Cadet would not be as the same uh, you know, quality or tier, even though it's a good piece of equipment as a Kubota or a John Deere. And, and Mayor, this was also a matter of availability, was it not? Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So they've, uh, go ahead, have something. But sorry. these were tendered through the, can, sorry, the canoe, which is, yeah. Yes. Was, the numbers did come in through there. Yeah. Okay. Which is already, ten, it's just a way for us to use that service that already has a tendering process out there. Yeah. When we're in a pinch without low, uh, tractors. So, uh, I take it they're already using the mortars? Uh, I didn't confirm that before yeah. this meeting, but um, I understand that they've been picked up. Uh, I, I could confirm. Oh, we don't have them yet? I could confirm and um, they were picked up, follow up I, okay. if, if they're in use yet, but I can. Uh, I know that we need to make sure they're insured before we, we take them out. So 
Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. So that's... I'll just, I'll confirm, but um, exactly when they're put into use, okay? Oh. I was just trying to get some feedback on how they liked it. That's... Okay, so then uh, next next thing we go down to is 4.5.1, request for service reports. Go ahead, Councilor Clyburn. So this question is for our CAO. I know we've been working on some files together. One of the questions I have about uh, this report is um, when I see the report, it says uh, June 1st to June 30th, total number of requests 133. Um, what, and then how many are open and how many are closed and so forth, right? Bylaws, 76, 50 closed, 26 open. What about bylaws that haven't been closed previously, like carryover. How do we see that? Like uh, sometimes like sometimes I put in complaints and as mm -hmm. you know, I've been waiting quite a while for those complaints to be addressed. Mm -hmm. This just sort of shows me what's been open, what's been closed, but not in, what's in the still month. in arrears. Kind Correct. Of. So if, if council's interested in, in that data, we can provide a year to date, which would show um, all files remaining open and files uh, or requests for service that have been closed and those that are outstanding for resolution. Yeah, I, I think like it's June 30th, which is halfway through the year. If we could get a report like that, I'd like to know what's still left over. This gives me June, January 1st to June 30th, but I don't know what came before that. And I know there's some, still a lot hanging on that, okay. that just haven't been addressed. We can add a year to date on our next report for okay. next committee. Great, thank you very much. Um, just as a follow up to that comment, that's a good comment. But I'd also like to see something like, it's like the multiple listing services where you have days in the market, where it's like, how many days has it been open? I'd like to see that. On on a particular request for service or are, we have averages in these reports it doesn't it doesn't have to be specific in terms of the actual address but just uh, you could maybe put down a threshold there could be like 30 days or less 30 days or more 40 days or more I'd, I'd like to know if there's if it's taking too long then yes we would want to drill down and find out what exact why is it taking so long mm -hmm. right okay let me see if our our program has that functionality uh, but I can I can certainly check into that thank you anyone else so I guess I just got to clarify some questions here so this report this is only what's been opened in June it's not correct this is the oh. statistics for June only okay so when it says 28 opened and 50 closed we got to add the two together to say that there was a total of yeah. 70, 76 eight, requests for service I thought us. Okay. Any other uh, questions on this? I don't know. No, I think that the additional stats will help us determine how quickly things are being closed. Yes. We need well, to know that. It, it does have an average on here that uh, reports were closed within three days. Well. That might be the average, but yeah. there are the anomalies where we've been waiting six to eight months, even a year on some of them. Yeah. But these are just in the last 30 days. Yeah, these yeah. are just in the last 30 days, and then so there's a, <coughs> another report from January to June 30th as well. Okay. I think yeah. Uh, yeah, so, Lainey, what, I, what I'm saying is that if, if you see on, like under the bylaws, if it's unsightly slash derelict vehicles 11, and then if there could be another column added uh, that shows maybe 30 plus days open, how many? Okay. That, that would be ideal. Uh, I'll check into that. Okay. There is a request for service from January to June where they give you uh, a total of year to date, if you go back down to below. It's a graph that tells you, you know, what, uh, when it started, the incline, how it leveled off. Yeah, I, th I think you're referring to the report timeline. Yes. So that we generate as a, a year-to-date report. 
um, because it, it doesn't generate if you just pick one month. Yeah. Um, so you can certainly see the peaks and, and valleys in, in the seasonal changes that we've had so far this year. Yeah. So far it's 100 and I just take the first one, it would be 164 uh, requests for service for public works, 100 and, about 158 for bylaws. There's a lot. Really started to peak, started to go up in March, and then I guess what is it? Bylaws just keep keeps on going up. <laughs> it <doesn't stop. laughs> it's, summer is the season for for bylaw, for, certainly. Yeah. The snow melts and you start to see all the stuff. That <laughs> That's right. The bylaw issues. Yeah. That's right. And public works, it's sort of like flat, it's sort of leveled off here, at, at <coughs> whatever it is. It's still up there, but it's still. Yeah. Okay. No other questions. So next, we'll move down to the next one then. Which is, uh, nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Red River Planning, five point one. The audited financial report. Anyone got any questions on this that need to be asked? Or? Can you give us this in a nutshell? The ones that sit on the committee, just let us. How is it looking at that end? Is it? Uh, uh, generally, you know they. Uh, there's some ups and downs that they have. I, I don't know all the specifics again. Um, I think they said, uh, I don't know, Council of Clyber, was it permits that they said were down? What was down? Yeah, if you want me to comment on it. Sure, um, the um, The differences in, in um, cash flow and, and permits has, we received a report that permits are down by half at the same time as last year. So uh, where we had 300 permits taken out last year, we only have 150 this year, although there's been an e increase in commercial. There's some concerns about the market at this point, and we've asked the executive uh, director to stay on task, and if the income is down, that we, we may have to, you know, review staff and staffing procedure, uh, staffing at Red River Planning, because we want to come in um, in a balanced budget. So we've asked for a continuous reporting so that we know where we're at. And we've been assured that should there be a shortfall, uh, then we have to review, we have to review staffing issues. Go ahead, Councillor Campbell. Uh, Councillor Clyburn, do you know, I see there's interest income, so I'm just curious, do you know what that there is a reserve. How, how big is that reserve that they, that they have? I'm just curious. Um, I think that is, it was on there. Uh, a part of that reserve was drained because they had to pay out soccer. Mm -hmm. So there is a reserve there, but I'd have to look through the statements to find the actual number for you. This but there, that, that is, um, that is probably where your interest is coming from, is from those uh, reserves. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of interest. So that reserve must be very. Healthy. It was at one point, uh, but uh, if you look on page eight, um, you'll see the distribution to the city of Selkirk, note eleven. That's how much was taken out to pay them out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a substantial amount. So I can ask that question for council and uh, and our next meet board meeting exactly where we are in the reserves. So their cash value, their cash value is down nine hundred thousand from twenty twenty one. But that would be a bit of an anomaly because of the, because of the payout. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So it's. And that's why a loss was shown last year, too, was because of the payout. Uh, a great part of portion of that was because we had to pay that that money out. Uh, I would probably venture to guess your restricted cash note three is probably where you're um, gaining some interest on page number s on page six. Yeah, 
balance at year end total is 1.4 4 million. Prepaid was which is rent. Yeah. yeah. 1.9 million. But that that was uh, recouped again and. Uh, yeah. You're you're getting your you're getting your uh, restricted cash and cash assets. That's where you're getting your interest from. Oh, yeah. right. So those are those are your reserves and your current cash. It shows forty two thousand dollars in interest, so it's uh, it's a healthy something. Yeah, you but you see the difference be between cash in twenty twenty one and cash in twenty twenty two. Yeah. And if you add that uh, amount that I just showed you on the uh, mm -hmm. payout to Selker, yeah. it would it would come close to that, right? Just a com uh, any comment on the office expenses on page 17. There looks like the actual legal expenses was 73,000 uh, in 2021. They budgeted zero dollars in 2022, but the actual was 122,000 of legal expenses in 2022. Yeah, part of that was um, so there was it, of course issues with Selkirk leaving, and also there was. Um, uh, lawyers used for East St. Paul's uh, appeal. Yeah. And the question that I had asked is why isn't East St. Paul paying for that? But because it's a group fund and we work together as a municipality, uh, that came out of all of our, came out as one pot, right? And so the legal fees were high because of that appeal. So that's something to, for us to note as well. If it was us, it would be borne by this count as well. Uh, I've asked that we, you know, talk about that because right now that's the way we're operating. But if one municipality has five appeals, and they're sixty to a hundred thousand dollars a piece, that's going to drain our cash flow, right? So, you know, we have to look at something else in the funding in the future. And that was brought up, like that was a big discussion prior when, when I sat on their last term. It's it's some of the municipalities were going well if. That's the busier municipality. Why aren't they just paying for their own appeals? At the same time, we could we turned around and it was like, well, we're keeping the planning board going with with all those, you know, uh, permits. So it does end up a wash, I guess, at the end because that's usually the municipality that is high in permits where it would end up. So yeah, that's true. Yeah, good point. Any other questions? So 5.2 is Red River Planning's uh, district uh, annual report. It, is it, here they break it down into what different municipalities have done and what the, uh, if you uh, take a look, I think from what I remember, St. Clement's had the highest number of Page 14, page 13, 14, 12. It gives you all the uh, totals. And St. Clement's had, they had more uh, applications than West St. Paul. That's true, Mayor, but if you look at page seven, the number of issues permitted, uh, permitted issued by the municipality in 2022, we're at 990. Yeah, I know. I saw that too. We're seven hundred above everybody else. Yeah. So <laughs> I know that's quite substantial. And yeah. then if you look at, uh, they give you a history of all the different um, municipalities on page eight, which you can see that ours are considerably have gone have increased each year. Okay, so next, anyone got any questions on this one? Or? Just gotta say, when you put it in a graph and you put it at that, it really. Yeah, uh, yeah it really sees it. Eh? It's a shocker. Yeah. I know. Wow. Okay, so now we go down to 5.3, which is the monitoring report from Rockwood P Propellant. It's 300 pages long. Yeah, I was gonna say, Mr. Mayor, do we have uh, the Coles notes? On this at all, Michelle? No issues noted. No. Okay. They would be in the CS, I'm sure, if there was an issue. Yes. Yeah. yeah. 
they talk about you know some of the programs that they do they've replaced some wells some plate wells have to be replaced uh, they made a comment about uh, you know monitoring the bloom that they have the impact that uh, some areas have over it than others it's a pretty uh, it's a lot of information here Next is uh, 5.4, Santa Mons Foundation on Autism Awareness Ride. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 5.5 is uh, Municipal Council's Scholarship Thank You Note. Any new business? None I see. Next is uh, question period. Does anyone have any questions? By all means, if you could come forward, state your name. Hi there, my name is Violet DeSaint. I live at 326 Hiawatha Avenue. And I heard you discussing a administrative building that uh, you needed, um, which you're talking about contingency reserve fund, dipping into that. I propose you hold that off and we use that money for the citizens who really need the help for the sewage if you're moving forward with that. And that's sort of something I'd like you to look into. And uh, there was another thing, but I can't remember what it was, but I, I'll be bringing my pitchfork July 20th. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? Uh, by all means. It's hot in here, right? It is hot here. Yeah. It's a bit hot. Elm Link, 1045 Toshak Road. I'm looking at the Exchange Group Auditor's Report. Okay. Uh, and that, you're telling me earlier, that's the gas tax fund. Now, the agreement between Canada Community Building Fund and the RM has been in place since 2014. Has there been an annual audit of this reserve fund since 2014? Because this is the first time I've seen this. Uh, I would think that this audit was done every year. This reporting is, is uh, legislated, it's yeah. completed every year. It's completed every year, but this is the first time this has ever appeared on an agenda, or am I wrong? I don't I can't I, speak to that. So. I can't speak to that. Okay. I, I didn't check the history of every agenda okay. and every yeah. year that we've had gas tax. I have another uh, question about it. Does this reserve appear on the tax levy annual budget report? Uh, I'm going to direct that question to the, our acting CAO. She's writing down something now. So we'll just I, I'm noting that question. It would be okay. a question for our director of finance. Oh, what? Okay. okay. So, director of finance. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Follow up. Other municipal reserves do have a bylaw attached to them, um, how they can be used, so on and so forth. Does this reserve have a bylaw? And could we explain why it does or why it does not have a bylaw attached to it? Councilor Clyburn? Mayor, uh, this is the gas tax you're talking yep. about. Now, the gas tax has specific rules on what it can be used for and what it can't be used for. Yes. So well, that would we be the gas tax. Review those, please. Review those, those please. rules. Please, yes. Um, have any significant deficiencies in internal control being identified during the audit or previous audits? That would be another question. Yeah. No. Related question? No. Okay, the answer is no. Okay. No. Thank you. That's all my questions. Yeah. Thanks for asking questions. Yep. Thank you. Can't remember. Okay. <laughs> I think. Uh, I got to do this again. Hi, Violet DeSaint, 326 Hiawatha Avenue. So, uh, just hold it, just wait, just so you know in future that uh, if you come up for question period, you ask all your question periods at that time. And okay. Your, your, your turn is up because My apology other, because yeah. I didn't have a pen to make notes. So. Yes. No, no, just go ahead, but just, you know. Okay, well, I want to bring up that gas tax as well since 
the lady behind me mentioned that it could be used for various reasons not completely known and that it does sound like it could be applicable to some of the um, uh, delegated to some of the work somehow uh, involved in the sewage uh, you know if it's you know they use gas if we're, we're going to be charged for the gas that could the gas tax can go to the payment of that etc um, things that uh, you'll be billed for for this construction maybe we could use some of that um, that is within the parameters of what we could use it for for that and I'm sure there are certain areas of the construction of this project which can be allocated they can allocate that to that so that's something I would like to have considered and as you know I've written you guys letter after letter email after email today I went crazy so I um, I got it out of my system and I'll definitely be bringing a lot of that stuff up at uh, July 20th thank you thank you I have a question for you. Yep. I have a question for you. Yes. Thanks for asking your questions, but I just want to ask, are you generally a proponent that um, you're saying that the RM should expend funds to benefit a few people? Not a few people. There's 114 houses, I believe, that there are. And uh, we're senior citizens. Uh, we don't have a lot of waste. Uh, we don't have children. They're all growing up and they've left home. Um, so uh, we don't contribute a lot. I don't see the Red River actually becoming clean with 114 houses if we hold this off for a couple of years till it's more affordable. I'm okay with that. I just don't feel it, this is the time for it. I feel the affordability. I feel the, I, 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 you didn't get my email unless somebody has forwarded it to you. Um, I sent email to Giorgio Peter and um, they could forward that to you as well. Or Mr. Mayor, sorry, my apology. I'm sorry. And um, yeah, so no, I, 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 I uh, there's lots of things that I would actually the email I sent to the mayor would probably be worthwhile reading because I've explained everything in that. There's no point in me wasting your time because everything is in the email that I documented point by point by point and then some. So, Mr. Mayor, could you please forward that email to both Mike, Dorothy, Giorgio and whoever else may benefit yeah. from that Peter sorry I apologize <laughs> okay thank you very much and then we'll bring that up at uh, July 20th along with that, I'll bring that. Thanks. okay go ahead uh, come on up please Norma Alberg, 312 Evelyn Avenue. Um, these are all good points, and uh, I'd like to take it a little further. Um, in the notice that came out on the uh, LID, it says council is proposing that the municipal costs of 3.6 million be funded by borrowing. But what the people are saying is that they want there to be equity across the RM. Uh, further to uh, your question, Councillor Pactican. Mayor, may I interrupt? Is there, are you asking us a question or are you doing a presentation? Because you, this is the kind of presentation you should do at public hearing. I, I would like this information today because it's related to what you talked about in this evening's meeting. Okay, but, th but there's no question here. This is just a presentation you're giving us. Okay, I'll, I can make a question. June 13th, uh, Resolution 2013-280 identified various sources of financing for the duration of the wastewater system project. Those included new residential and commercial fees. The Red River planning showed that we had over 500 units last year in West St. Paul. If you take our sewer reserve of $2,500 per unit, that alone gives us $1.2 million. That is specifically set in for use for sewer development. The uh, sale of municipal lands was not discussed further tonight, but there are also uh, things there. The uh, municipal, the gas tax, uh, I have 
the information here. I can read you the uh, qualifying projects are local roads and bridges, highways, wastewater infrastructure, drinking water. I don't need to go further because I've already. I, I can, can share that with Ms. Lee also, please? So I yeah, can clarify, if I may. Go ahead. Wastewater products, projects are eligible unless there's other funding for this. Um, if you want to call it gas tax, it's not called that anymore, but gas tax it can't be stacked with other grant funding. So it makes that project ineligible. So your discussions about how you keep putting, uh, making a commitment to a long-term project and putting, in, putting monies into the reserve uh, seems to be working with the municipal buildings when the council chooses. The council gets to make these choices by resolution. And so there are reserve funds that are set up for the sewer. And those have been on a regular basis transferred over within the capital expenditure of a yearly budget when there's no sewer item in that capital budget at all. There so there is are there a question? Is there a, sorry, is there a question? Yes, I would like to know when the council is going to to adopt a standard approach of how they determine the um, the cost and the benefit to the residents. We have all the LIDs for the sewer. You asked if the previous presenter or question, uh, if she believes that it should go for a few people. We're talking currently about extending the water into the business park. There has been an extension of water to multiple places in the community in recent years. No LID has been set up for that. The RM has found the money in reserves. For wastewater, we've established reserves specific for that. But the council of the day has chosen to divert those funds elsewhere. So my question is, when will council look equitably at how it directs and uses its reserve funds and so that we do not have special interest groups, not like an LID street, but like an industrial park or like a school or like a middle church home. When will there be equity for the, for the people? The people are saying that they don't have any problem they have a problem, but they understand that they're responsible for their own private property. So for this project, uh, we're looking at about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to do our own private property and the fees. But they don't understand why right now they have to pay thirty-five thousand dollars or twenty-seven thousand dollars to take the municipal pipe that's going down the street and paying for that because they've already had payments into these reserve funds and those are there. So they're, they're trying to understand why are we paying twice for that? We're not challenging our private property prices. Councillor Rochelle. Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put the councillor hat on because I'm in the same LAD yep. so I can I completely understand the numbers uh, yep. shock me at the same time, but sitting at this side of the table i've been involved with i think four lads for sewer in west st paul since it started and it, it would be difficult for me to even say taking the reserve funds which is at large the entire municipality and after four lads saying now we're gonna we're gonna put reserve funds into the fourth lad which at the same time would not only look bad on myself sitting there mm -hmm. as it's the same LID that I'm in, I live in, but it, as the rest of council sitting here, why wouldn't the other, the other LIDs now be coming back to us saying, well, why did you not put money into our LIDs at the same time? Why didn't like, you? Well, I believe at the outset when, when all of the initial monies came, all of our money Mm -hmm. was poured into the water treatment plants in the subdivisions. 
and those came out around five thousand dollars there are other options for council to look at and one may be i believe that ross moratus should also be reviewed because that was a large number of dollars but you can look at something like for the equity that everybody who comes on the lid any lid they look after their own and that the reserve funds that have money there pay the other and that each resident or ratepayer can top that reserve fund back up by choose an equitable number whether it's five thousand dollars we each owe five thousand dollars goes back into that reserve fund along with the other sources so that it continues to build it for the next one okay sure. now I, i've been looking at all the lads just because it's coming up again yep and you're saying that rossmore came in at a high number was yep. another one that came in at a high number yeah but if you look back at the lads that happened in west st paul which was maddock connecting to riverdale there was already there was already uh, Infrastructure. infrastructure involved there so there was a smaller amount of infrastructure Lister Rapids again it was a smaller amount of infrastructure there was already um, a lift station mm -hmm. which had to be just converted to a or there was a pump house which had to be just converted to a lift station but they already had pipes in the ground mm -hmm. so that's why those numbers came in at a lower number mm -hmm. Rossmore Addis was exactly well I'm not gonna say exactly the same work had to be done mm -hmm. as would have to be happening in this LED mm -hmm. so I, I was questioning why the numbers are all coming like at, at those numbers at the same time mm -hmm. but once I'm reviewing them looking at Rossmore Addis to the other LEDs going well there was so much infrastructure already there that's why it's hard to compare all of the LEDs together yeah. like I, I hope that comes across the way it, it sounded upstairs as I'm saying it but yeah the, there, there was an original plan that has not been followed through. Matt, Maddock Drury was pulled into Riverdale, which had its infrastructure, but they did not. When Middle Church uh, Balderstone was done, they had infrastructure there, but Evelyn was not pulled in. And Nye and Baldock, those were the original LIDs, mm -hmm. but they got shifted out and they got pulled out in ways that really hurt the LIDs in their capacity to share that cost. So I think that the council has to look at what other options are there because at this point, if we walk along from the original ones to Rossmore Addis to ours, I'd say you're looking at about 100,000. So if you're happy with that, that would be okay. But I don't think that that was the original intent I believe the council of the day in 10 years ago knew that the escalation of this would be really hard on ratepayers. So they identified these sources of funding and those, those reserve funds are there. They've just been chosen to be used for other things. So I'm encouraging you to please stay open-minded and go back to the beginning and the original intent of those sources. and think about what options are there like holding off for a couple of years yeah so like uh, you know there's been quite a bit of discussion on this LID with uh, myself and the acting CAO Giorgio was also in discussion this is a learning process for us there are some things yep. that we've learned uh, am I right in saying that but some things and we are looking at some ways to reduce cost we think that there is a way to, to do it it's just that right now we're not able to talk about this Yep, I understand openly. that. That's why um, I'm trying to just we're, put we're, ideas there. We're, we're running on a borderline on, yep. on, on here, so I yep. just want to make sure that we don't cross the boundary. But yep. I think when the uh, public hearing comes up, there will be a lot more information that we'll be able to uh, freely share. And it, it is, like, like I said, it is a learning project. And our acting CEO was asking the same question, why didn't we do something like this before, right? And which is a good sign that, you know what, we did learn something from this. And she is looking at some other ways to give you a little more uh, input than what all the other ones had. It, it, and uh, I think you'll be satisfied with it. Might not be happy, but you'll be satisfied that we got the results, so. Well, it comes to affordability. Excuse me, just uh, I, I, I think before we, 
breach any in camera information, we need to stop here. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think so. and, and that's why I saw. Okay. Okay. So I just encourage you to keep yes. your keep your mind wide open when you have your discussions. And it, it is open. Yes. Good. Good. We are listening. We are yeah. reading the comments coming back to us. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and that's what generated the conversation that yeah. that we're having. Not within council, but with uh, some of the things that I've had with uh, yeah. the acting CEO, George and I had some of those comments. So we I, are listening. I think so. the residents are are in favor of of the sewer. Yeah. Uh, it, the shock, the t sticker shock, is too much, and uh, yeah, you yeah. have to figure something out. And there are lots of ideas here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any other questions? No, no, you had your chance. Sorry. Sorry. None? Okay. You got a question? Come on up. Ron Lewick, 1377 Miller Road. Um, my question is in regards to the RFS. Um, just like Councillor Clyber and, and Councillor uh, Pactigan bring up, it's very confusing when you see closed open and it's the same topic it's or or you don't know how long it's been open for um, going back to the may 11th public hearing regarding the gun range it was brought up that there was only one noise complaint placed on the on, on the gun range we found out after investigating some more afterwards it's because they, it's basically you could have 85 complaints about the gun range but it's under one file so they constitute that as one complaint. So 85 complaints are closed. And so when, when the, after the May 11th hearing, uh, neighbors, okay, we started complaining again or, or putting in RFSs. Yeah. Just hold it, just wait. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. J just to clarify, yeah. we are compiling each complaint under one request for service. Yeah per individual for tracking purposes, mm -hmm. but we recognize each complaint okay. within the request for service. Okay. Okay? Yep. So what I found that um, speaking with re fellow residents in my community, just the wordage, just the saying it's closed, you and I discussed that, and she went back and changed it. Because it's, it's what it is is somebody puts in an, an RFS and they write it, we receive an email back saying, Thank you for submitting this, and it's now closed, and it's transferred to blank, blank, blank. Doesn't make like so. We changed the wordage, and I was just looking at the wordage, and, and yeah, that's great, but that should probably be changed for all RFSs. Like I don't understand. Like uh, Councillor Pactigan talked about an average of how many days it's open for, and and some stuff is open for a year. Like it's so confusing and. So just to answer your question is that the RFS, this was another one that we're learning on. We are, as council, we're learning on it. Uh, our uh, acting CAO has come up with some ideas on how she can to modify it. This is a, uh, a program that is not ours, I believe. We're going to call it a, a, it's a, adopted or something like that. Yeah, so we have, we can't change it the way we want to change it. It has to be sort of a collective. But I just, I just, I just listened to them talk and, it, and it's, it, it's the exact same thing. The stuff stuff is on there for a year, yeah. and, and and how do we how do we know how do we know where to put our resources? Wait a minute. This is somebody calls uh, because the uh, the drain here is is not improper and it's closed like that. Well, of course, but the drain was doing that so many times over the course of you don't you understand yeah, what I'm getting no, at? No, like, I, I understand what you're getting. It, it should so be a better system that that, yeah. that, that that the resources go to what to. And we are aware of that, and awesome. we are looking at ways to improve I just, it. Just uh, want to comment on one thing. You say that some of them are six months a year. There is some that are seasonal. You're going to look if a grader hits a piece of grass yep. in your front yard in the winter, it's not going to be fixed until mm -hmm. the summer. And the RFS system is much better. I, I was here when there was no RFS system. So it was basically you're phoning in, complaining. You got no reply back. So at least like this, there is a tracking. Yep. We're, we're getting, we're not perfect at it, and no, we're never going to be with, you know, we don't have a staff of unlimited people 24 hours a day. Yep. Comments coming back from from everybody, it, it helps. Mm -hmm. 
but it, it is an, a, a still growing and improving system. Yeah. And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm giving you a compliment, or I'm giving uh, uh, Lainey a compliment because she went back to Karen and, and, and said, just change the wordage of your email. Because mm. people are like, this is ridiculous. I'm not going it, to, it's closed. And then I have to stick handle, right? And no, no, it's not closed. It goes, blah, 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 right? And then so all it is is just a matter of changing email. And then it's. It just settles everybody with the word. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, Louis, thanks for your, uh, your perspectives. Uh, your concerns have been re are registering with us, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll definitely follow it up for sure. So, cool. Good point. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? By all means. Um, can you six minutes? Jerry Belenke, 354 Garden View Drive. I um, wasn't going to say anything, but seeing we're talking on the topic here. Uh, I've had a complaint put in four years ago, and the counselor put in several repeats of that complaint. Four years later, I still have not been contacted. I've had received no letters or anything. The only reason I'm talking about this now is because you people are listening and you're trying to fix things. So that's why I'm bringing it up. So you can't fix if you don't know it's broken. Not complaining, no. providing information, and that's that's the point. If you're going to select who you do the the RFSs, well, then other people might be in the same position that I was. I come here, view my uh, opinion, and maybe it isn't appreciated, but it's still my opinion. Everybody has an opinion, but that doesn't. I warrant that the process being circumvented. That's just my point. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate okay. it. Anyone else? Okay, so that will close question period. So we're going to go uh, in camera now. So thank you for your uh, questions and your input. Today we're coming out of camera. We've uh, had a discussion on the wastewater collection system and uh, information report on the theft of the moors. With that, I adjourn this uh, meeting. It is now uh, 9.15 on July 11th.